European Medicines Agency or EMA has recently revised the questions and answer documents related to the nitrosamines on 7th July 2023. Now a very important uh, revision in this particular Q&A is related to the question number 10 and that talks about which limits apply for nitrosamines in medicinal product. So what is the important updates in the question number 10? So if you look at the, uh, the two different approaches to define the or to establish the limit of uh, nitrosamines or acceptable intake of nitrosamines, in that particular area, there is a very significant updation. So how one can establish the limit for nitrosamines? Maybe based on conducting the carcinogenic study understanding the TD50 and then extrapolating to 1 in 1 lakh and understand the acceptable intake. That is the approach A. But in case if you do not conduct the carcinogenic study and your nitrosamine is a new entity, in that case you can follow the point number B. So if the nitrosamine are identified without sufficient substance specific data, to derive a substance specific limit for lifetime exposure as recommended in ICH M7R1 guideline. The first point is very important as far as today's discussion is concerned. The carcinogenic potency categorization approach or CPCA for nitrosamine which is given into the annex 2 in the same guidance document should be used to establish the acceptable intake unless other robust data are available that would override this particular acceptable intake. So especially this Q&A document has introduced a very important thought process that the acceptable intake of any nitrosamine can be defined by using the CPCA that is nothing but the SAR or structure activity relationship or which is also called as the read across approach. Now this particular approach has been used by many regulators to define the limit for similarly looking nitrosamine compounds. So in this particular discussion, we will first try to understand this uh, CPCA and then in the following uh, discussions, we will try to understand uh, how to define the acceptable intake by using CPCA and we will also talk about the different categories I mean there are five different categories defined by the CPCA and how this categorization is actually done how the acceptable intake uh, to specific category has been defined and finally we will also talk about some examples so that we can relate with the CPCA. So in this particular discussion, we'll only try to understand what is meant by this uh, carcinogenic potency categorization approach. So let me bring the presentation on the board. And here is the presentation where we are trying to understand what is meant by this carcinogenic potency categorization approach or CPCA for defining the acceptable intake for nitrosamine. The carcinogenic potency categorization approach, as I said, is based on structure activity relationship or which is also called as SAR concept, which is also called as a read across concept. Now is this concept introduced for very first time? No. Now this concept is been in the use since long and even EMA itself has used this concept. Now this is the, the screenshot of the acceptable intake given into the EMAS nitrosamines guideline and if you look very carefully you will understand that the SAR or read across approach is used to define the limit for few nitrosamines like DIPNA or DIPNA then NMBA or MENP or NDBA. So this guideline has also accepted this uh, read across approach in case if uh, the newly identified nitrosamine 
do not have the sufficient carcinogenic study or database and same approach is now can be used by the applicant for the newly identified nitrosamines provided there is a structural similarity between the already studied compound and the new nitrosamine compound by using cpca the acceptable intake limit for newly identified nitrosamines without carcinogenicity data can be defined based on structurally close analog with reliable carcinogenicity data that means you should have a one structure which has the sufficient carcinogenicity data and in case if there is a similar structure that is newly identified into a product then the cpca or carcinogenic potency categorization approach can be used the cpca is used to define the acceptable intake for both nitrosamines and as well as ndsris or nitrosamine drug substance related impurities in most of the cases industry was struggling to define the acceptable intake for ndsris because ndsris is going to be mostly a new nitrosamine probably the sufficient carcinogenicity data would not be available and in that case you can certainly use this carcinogenic potency categorization approach the cpca does not apply to compounds bearing a carbon atom on both sides of nitroso group where the carbon is directly double bonded to a hetero atoms and there are certain examples given into the guideline like n nitroso amide or n nitroso ureas or n nitroso gonadine so for this compound this potency categorization approach will not work and let us understand the examples so the first example quoted in the guideline is n nitroso amides so there is a hetero compound present hetero compound could be oxygen could be nitrogen could be sulfur or could be phosphorus and we should be a directly double bonded to a carbon so you can easily understand that this is the alpha carbon and on to this alpha carbon this oxygen is double bonded and oxygen is a hetero atom so n nitroso amide is excluded from this particular categorization approach same is the case for n nitroso ureas where you can easily see that this alpha carbon is connected to again the hetero atom which is oxygen double bonded with oxygen so the nitroso urea is also excluded from the cpca same is the case with the gonadine and the nitroso carbamates so any double bonded hetero atom connected to the carbon is excluded from the carcinogenic potency categorization approach additionally the cpca does not apply to nitrosamines where the n nitroso group is attached to a nitrogen within a hetero aromatic ring and the example is given as the indole so what is the indole and what is the hetero aromatic ring let us first try to understand the aromatic compound or hetero aromatic compound so any aromatic compound which contain hetero atoms like oxygen nitrogen or sulfur as a part of the cyclic conjugated pi system are called as the hetero aromatic compound and here is the example of indole on the left side that nitrogen is included into the ring so it becomes the hetero aromatic compound and in case if there is a nitroso uh, functional group that is n double bond o connected to the nitrogen inside the ring you can see on this right side then this compound will be excluded from the carcinogenic potency categorization approach so this is for the first uh, discussion and in the next discussion we will try to understand how one can define the acceptable intake for this uh, kind of nitrosamines by using cpca thank you so much